uh, and we will uh, finish our discussion about contingency tables and then we will go to new topic uh, about correlation coefficient uh, presentation is uh, uh, present uh, once again in student information system. So first of all we will need a data file which is called uh, Conte SAV. It should be in your email and we will also use uh, the file uh, that can be downloaded from SAS uh, Sign Scheme XLS. So first of all, if you can please open a uh, data file which is called ContestAV. So I would only briefly repeat uh, previous discussion. So uh, we try to prepare contingency tables uh, which are mainly uh, <coughs> suitable for nominal and ordinal variables and the main goal is to analyze relationship between usually two variables. Uh, we recognize whether these variables are related or not by so-called uh, chi-square test of independence. Uh, the measure of effect size, it means measure of relationship, is called contingency coefficient and we discussed about Kramer's V. And uh, new topic is something what we can call detailed analysis in contingency tables. So if you compute chi-square test and this chi-square test is statistically significant. It means there is proven relationship between two nominal or ordinal variables. You can be interested in <coughs> more detailed analysis. It means in question, okay, in which combinations in contingency tables there are relationships. For example, as we analyzed last time, uh, relationship between gender and uh, the highest achieved education, we can ask, okay, if there is a relationship, does it mean that, for example, women are less educated than men, or opposite is true, or women usually follow uh, primary education and university education, men more often follow secondary education, etc., etc., etc. Uh, and there is very easy tool how to answer these questions uh, and uh, this is not described in Fields textbook so please take it as a bonus uh, to uh, this text and uh, we call this approach as sign scheme generally so that's why the file which is present for your purpose is called also sign scheme uh, and uh, the logic of this sign scheme is very easy, I guess. If I go back to the discussion about uh, chi-square test of independence, so last time we discussed that usually the contents of contingency table by default in individual software is something what is called uh, <coughs> observed counts. We also discussed how to compute so-called expected counts, it means counts for the table in which two variables would be totally independent. And if you make the difference between these observed and expected count, this difference is called residual. So residual can be computed as the difference between observed count minus expected count. And the higher the difference is, the higher the departure from the independence is in individual cells of contingency tables. But there is a real problem. Residuals are absolute figures as there are differences of observed counts, it means absolute values and expected counts, also some ideal absolute values and there is no measurement how we can recognize whether this residual is high or low. It can be plus or minus but it can be maybe 1000 plus or 1000 uh, minus. So we need some statistical tool 
by which we can recognize that our residual is big enough or small enough to infer our results once again from the sample to the population. And the easiest tool is, excuse me, there is a mistypo here, so I will correct it, it's uh, adjusted, is to use something what is called adjusted standardized residuals. By this adjustment and standardization process from these residuals, we will prepare variable which is nearly normally distributed. And we can assess values for these adjusted standardized residuals by previous recommendations about big and small values such as minus two and plus two. Please only uh, follow this short repetition. If you take the range from minus two till plus two, so what is the percentage of values inside this range for standardized normal distribution? Approximately 95%. And the rule is, if your adjusted standardized residual, which approximately follows this curve, is outside of this range, then this, your, uh, then this means your result, your residual, is statistically significant and different from zero, we can say. And we can say, okay, in this cell, there is some relationship between these two variables. But this is quite easy uh, theory and uh, we will follow it by practicing. But first of all, only one more command. So if you compute adjusted standardized residuals, or of course, as PSS will do it for you, for example, in our table, which will be male and female, and uh, individual levels of education, it means uh, elementary or primary, secondary uh, without a diploma, secondary with a diploma, and tertiary. So we will get some figures. Let's imagine we will get following figures. Now I'm not computing uh, uh, with real data. This is only my imagination. Maybe there will be minus three here and plus three here. For the second category, maybe there will be plus four here and minus four here. Uh, for the next category, maybe uh, there will be minus 1.5 plus 1.5 and maybe uh, plus 2.5 for the last one for male and minus 2.5 for female. And if you compute this sign scheme, uh, these adjusted residuals, it is quite common, but it's not present in SPSS, that's why we will use uh, Microsoft Excel tool, which was prepared by me, to replace these values by signs, pluses or minuses. And it's very easy rule. If there is some minus value lower than minus two, you will replace it by one minus. If there is some plus value, which is higher than plus two, you will replace it by plus. And we can follow this structure very easily. Minus, and there is only one problem. For the third category, these two values are not outside the range minus two and plus two. So, there is no real statistical evidence for rejection of hypothesis uh, of uh, independence and usually we use symbol zero. So we will replace it by zeros. If it is inside the range of minus two plus two, the value for adjusted standardized residuals. You will see later in Microsoft Excel tool that it will be slightly more complicated even, as there will be not only one plus, but sometimes two or three pluses, and the same will be present for minuses. It's slightly uh, maybe uh, incorrect, but in statistics usually we use one symbol, plus or minus, for statistical significance at 0.05. It means classical five percentage risk of incorrect rejection of null hypothesis. 
Two pluses or two minuses are usually used for lower level. It means only one person or 0 0.01. And three pluses or three minuses are usually present for 0 0.001. So only one tenth of percent risk of incorrect rejection of no hypothesis. But please take in mind that it really matters whether there is plus or minus and it doesn't matter at all whether there are one, two or three of these symbols. So the effect is important but the number of signs is not important at all for interpretation. And how to prepare a sign scheme in a SPSS environment. So, first of all, it's necessary to compute adjusted standardized residuals, and we can find them in cross steps, that's quite easy to guess, in statistics. So, we will compute our table, and then we will copy the table into Microsoft Excel environment, into our tool for sign scheme, and Microsoft Excel will prepare for us these signs. So, that's quite easy, I would say. Of course, it would be easier even if SPSS will prepare a sign scheme for us. If you are good at programming, you can uh, program your own program in SPSS, which will replace adjusted standardized results by these symbols, plus, uh, minus, or zeros. The problem is only that individual versions of SPSS use usually slightly different programming code, and I'm too lazy to learn every new version. Microsoft Excel is still all the same, so that's not necessary to learn every year new language. Okay, so excuse me uh, for my laziness uh, and uh, start to compute it uh, directly. If you uh, have opened the file which is called ContiSAV, it is prepared for us, so there is a variable about education, four categories of education from previous lecture for you. And uh, if we would like to follow this analysis, male, female versus elementary, uh, up to tertiary education, so we can start. Last time, if I would repeat basic results, we have proven there is some relationship, and it was quite weak relationship according to the value of contingency coefficient. And this time, we would like to know something more about the structure of this relationship to go into this detail and compute sign scheme. So, once again, the same as the last time, let's go into analyze, descriptive statistics, and the fourth procedure, which is called cross steps or cross tabulations. Okay, and now uh, we will prepare our rows and columns, uh, and I will propose only uh, exchange rows and columns from previous lectures. It will be easier to copy it uh, into Microsoft Excel environment. So please, Use education for rows, no, excuse me, education for columns, not for rows, excuse me, excuse me for Excel. Education for rows and uh, gender the first variable for columns. It will be better as uh, the table would be, let's call it shorter. And now, please, let's go uh, into cells. And here, please check adjusted standardized residuals. In the middle part of this panel, uh, on the right side, the last one option. Adjusted standardized residual. And please do not check observed counts. We would like to have only adjusted standardized residuals checked in this dialog. So that's our requirement to find the table in the output which will include adjusted standardized results only. Okay, continue, okay, and that's our table. So, we can see a result and I guess you are able now only in your head to imagine what will be the shape of sign scheme. So, if you replace big minuses or big pluses uh, by minus or plus, and here you can see we were nearly precise, one and a half and one and a half, but I didn't know this value, that's only a <coughs> random process in my head. So there will be minus, plus, uh, plus, minus, zero, zero, 
and plus minus. So we would be able to use this table for preparation of sign scheme also in our head, but it's maybe better to use it uh, somewhere in the software. So if you open a sign scheme XLS, here it is. So that's very easy. First of all, you will take your table from uh, SPSS environment and copy it and starting at uh, sixth row. This is description. And here you will recognize sign scheme. So let's try to use it. So I will take it, control plus C or copy and paste from the sixth row. So I will use only values. And of course, there are some more zeros as uh, this tool is prepared for a bigger table. So I will erase all these zeros outside the table. And this is basic sign scheme. So I will only make it bigger for you to be able to read it. And let's see our results. So you can see three minuses and three pluses for elementary education. What does it mean? It means that there are much more women with elementary education in the Czech population than men. So it's relative comparison for these two categories. And we can say, okay, okay, not only in my data, but I can, at the level of statistical significance, which is 0.001, quite low, we don't use uh, such low values usually in social sciences, so I can conclude that even in the population, there will be a huge difference between the proportion of women and men with elementary education only. For secondary without a diploma, the situation is just opposite. So we have proven that in the whole Czech population there will be more men than women for this category of achieved education. Okay, what is the interpretation for the next category? What would you conclude by these zeros? We haven't proven there is any difference for this proportion in the Czech population. Once again, let's remind, we are trying to infer from our sample to the population. So for people who are adult in our sample, for all adults in the Czech Republic. And for tertiary education, you can see only two symbols. So it's not statistically significant at 0.001 but only we can say 0.01, still highly statistically significant. And the conclusion is, okay, for tertiary education, there are more men than women in the Czech population, according, yeah? How did you make the table? Which one? Okay, I have copied these adjusted residuals to the sixth row, so starting at uh, a6 cell in Microsoft Excel environment and it computes automatically sign scheme on the right side. Yeah? So you have to enter the table here on the left side from the cell A6 and it will be automatically computed for you. Yeah? Some more questions? Okay, so now I would like to ask you whether this is clear how to interpret these results. I guess it's not so complicated, but only, once again, take it as it is. It is relative comparison of these categories for these individual categories. And of course, the size of these differences between these two categories, we can approximately interpret from contingency table itself. So if I will go back once again into contingency tables, it means cross tabs, and I will try to ask SPSS uh, to compute for me some percentages. If our table is like this one, it would be nice to have column percentages instead of row, which we discussed last time. So we can try to understand what are these differences in real figures. 
So, for example, you can see that for tertiary education, in spite of the fact that according to science scheme, this is statistically highly significant difference, this is not, not such a huge difference from substantive point of view, 11 versus nearly 8 percent. But for example, for the first category for elementary education, that's quite a huge difference, 9 versus 23. And the same can be maybe uh, also repeated for secondary without education, uh, without a diploma education uh, category 48 versus 34. So that's deeper insight into contingency table by so-called sign scheme and we use adjusted standardized results. Only one recommendation, if you would like to use this tool which was prepared uh, uh, by me and your table is bigger, you have to copy these computations to another cells. Copy in Microsoft Excel is very easy. You will go uh, to the right <coughs> lower corner and then you will take uh, the left button on your mouse and you copy the formulas which are behind. And if you like to know more about this computation, so you can see there is some sequence of F options and you can recognize what are uh, borders for individual one, two, three pluses or minuses. So for one, there is uh, 1.96, which is approximated by the value of two. For two minuses or pluses, there is value 2.58, and for three pluses or minuses, 3.29. But it's not necessary to remember it, just use this tool or another tool you can find uh, at the internet and that's all. Okay. So, that's it. And uh, we can skip to the last one presentation, uh, which is devoted to correlation analysis. So, I only have to download it. Like this. Okay, so first of all, why we call it correlation and uh, what is correlation coefficient uh, as measurement for correlation itself. So, last time we discussed contingency tables and we know that if we would like to measure especially a relationship for nominal variables, we can use something what is called contingency coefficient. If your variables are two nominal variables or two cardinal variables, we use for measurement of relationship something what is called correlation coefficient. So for nominal variables, we mainly use contingency coefficient and for ordinal or cardinal variables, we use mainly correlation coefficient. That's the difference. Uh, so, once again, we can say that correlation coefficient is effect size for this relationship. So we can compare, for example, correlation coefficient uh, for different countries, different times, and we can conclude about our results. And if we go back, uh, so once again, I would like to repeat that contingency coefficients are usually in the range from zero till one, as they do not measure the direction of relationship. Correlation coefficients, as they are for cardinal and ordinal variables, and they can be ranked at least from the lowest to the highest value, so correlation coefficients are usually in the range from minus one till plus one. So they can measure the size of relationship and also the direction of relationship. So we sometimes discuss about negative and positive relationship. So let's start with some uh, easy examples. So give me some easy example of positive relationship between two phenomena, two variables. So if one value is bigger, the second one is bigger. Some real life example. Maybe from social sciences. Maybe from 
and other signs or maybe only from the real life. Hmm? So some example, positive relationship between two phenomena. Hmm? Okay, education income. Yeah, it can be. Another example? Sure. More examples? Or at least this is expectation, I would say. Maybe this is not real. <laughs> we will test it. Thanks for example. Huh? Another example? Maybe the higher effort uh, uh, in my homework and preparation uh, to school, the better the grade. Maybe. Once again, this may be expectation. Okay, okay, let's go uh, to reverse uh, or opposite uh, uh, direction and try to find some phenomenon with uh, negative relationship. So if one value is higher, the second one is lower. So once again, if you are a student, so I would say, for example, the more courses uh, uh, you are registered in, the less free time you have. Next examples. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but maybe that's not true. Once again, maybe that's only expectation, theoretical expectation. Okay. Uh, so, if the value for correlation coefficient is negative, it means that your relationship is also negative. If it is positive, it means your relationship is also positive. And if it is zero or close to zero, it means there is no relationship between two variables you are interested in. So, Let's start with a uh, short description of uh, the mostly used coefficients, but there are more, approximately uh, 10 well-known coefficients, but we will use only three, which are present in SPSS environment. And the first one we will discuss is Pearson's, which is mainly four cardinal variables. And for ordinal variables, SPSS offers you two possible formulas Spearmans and candles. So if you have two cardinal variables, you should apply Pearson's coefficient. And if you have ordinal variables, you can decide whether to use Spearmans or candles. <coughs> and uh, if you like to find these coefficients, you will go into analyze, correlate, and bivariate. And now I would like to give you only brief insight how to compute it. Of course, you are not expected to compute it by hand, but at least you should know something about it as uh, you are able to know something about the behavior for these coefficients. So let's start with Pearson's uh, coefficient. Uh, and if we have two cardinal variables, it is very easy that we can uh, make a picture for our data and we will recognize how to compute it. So, if you have uh, some variables, as uh, for example, colleague proposed uh, uh, length of education, I would uh, call it uh, LED, uh, and income. So, I and C. And let's take, for example, we have some data which are like these crosses. So I would follow expectation from the colleague uh, that uh, the higher education is, the higher income is. Yes. At least we can start with some positive expectations. Uh, and uh, how to compute correlation coefficient, uh, what is the formula behind? Uh, so logic uh, for this coefficient is following. You would find average for length of education and for income. So let's assume that these averages are approximately here in this cross. So this is uh, average for education and this is average uh, 
for income. Let's call these variables as x and y. That's classical for access to use x and y symbols. So that's why I will use average for x and y. And the computation for correlation coefficient would be following. So you would take the difference between the average for individual axis and real values. So let's start, for example, with this first point. So this is the average. This is the difference between the average length of education and length of education for this first respondent. If we would take the difference between this value and this value, it would be minus as the average is higher than the length of education for this respondent. We can also take the second difference between income for this first respondent and average income for all these respondents in row. It will be also minus. Let's take the second one, this one. It will be also minus and minus. The third one respondent is maybe slightly more complicated as the level of education is slightly higher than is the average, so it is plus this difference, but the level of his or her income is slightly below the average, so this is minus difference. We have last two, so this one is plus difference for length of education and this is plus difference for income and the last one quite big income as well as quite big level of education and both differences for both axes are positive. And these differences are multiplied for the computation of correlation coefficient and sum up all these multiplications. So the formula is flowing. So you will take the difference for individual respondents at x-axis multiplied by the same quantity for y-axis. And you will sum up it for all individual respondents. So we will use a symbol for sum and index i as we are summing up for the first one, second one, blah, 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 blah. And for statistical reasons, we will divide it by number of respondents. So I will use small n here. This quantity is called covariance. That's why we usually use symbol big C. The real problem, which is included in this formula is that if you sum up all these multiplied uh, differences from the average, the real value can be from minus infinity till plus infinity. So covariance as the measurement of relationship for two cardinal variables can be from minus infinity till plus infinity. And if you would say, okay, okay, I have proven that my data are related somehow and uh, the level of this relationship is 32,665, he or she would uh, say, okay, and what does it mean? Is it big relationship or not? That's why statisticians decided to take covariance, so this formula, and divided by standard deviation for x and y for education and income in our case. And this quantity is usually described as small r. And this is formula for Pearson's correlation coefficient for cardinal variables. So you will take covariance this quantity and divided by standard deviation for the first variable multiplied by the standard deviation for the second variable. And it can be proven 
that this quantity must be every time in the range from minus one till plus one. Don't believe anybody that in the word war second or another time there were correlation coefficients outside of this range. These are only stories in some statistical textbooks, but it must be in this range. So this is Pearson correlation coefficient for two cardinal variables. The reason why it is prepared for cardinal variables is very easy as there are averages in these formulas. And we know that to compute statistically correctly average is allowed only for cardinal variables. So this is Pearson formula. Of course, it's not necessary for you to remember this formula, but you should know something about it, what is behind. So this logic of summing up of individual differences between average at x and y axis, that's the logic behind. Real problem which is present in computation or interpretation of this correlation coefficient is following. I will not lie about it. So uh, if your relationship is very, very close to our problem, so it means data will be like this one, Pearson will measure the relationship uh, very nice as these points are nearly following the line. So if the relationship between two variables nearly, usually uh, not in practice perfectly, but nearly follows the line, we call this relationship as linear, as linear relationship, then Pearson coefficient is very good for the measurement of this relationship. But if your data follow another shape, let's imagine, for example, that our data will be like this one picture. Is there any relationship or not between these two variables if the shape is like this one? What do you remember from secondary school maths? How do we call this function? How is it called? Quadratic function? Yeah? Do you know this shape at least? Have you ever seen it? That's only my question. Okay. It can be described uh, that uh, y is uh, a multiplied by x squared plus uh, b multiplied by x plus some constant c. But according to Pearson's covariance and standardization formula, we would say, okay, these points are strange. If I would like to fit some line into this picture and to compute correlation coefficient according to Pearson, so I would say, okay, the best line for this data would be like this one. And According to Pearson, correlation coefficient would be zero. So these variables are not independent, but according to linear fashion style of this relationship, they are independent. So Pearson's formula is no general formula for any relationship, but only a relationship that can be described by the line. So if your relationship is another than linear, Pearson formula is not very nice for your data. Okay? And now maybe somebody can raise a question. Okay, and how I can recognize that my data are according to linear relationship or some nonlinear relationship? And my advice would be very easy. Let's go some lectures back and uh, recognize how to draw a chart and if you draw a chart for your data, you should recognize it by the picture. So that's my easy tool. Okay, so that's a uh, discussion about uh, Pearson. And uh, we will very quickly go through another 
alternatives uh, uh, for correlation coefficients uh, for ordinal data uh, mainly and we will start with Spearman coefficient. So the Spearman uh, coefficient is based on the logic of ranking of your data so it means it will replace your original data by ranks and compute difference, uh, differences for these ranks. So let's start uh, how it works uh, with a simple example. So let's have for simplicity once again five respondents. And let's imagine once again we will have uh, two variables uh, uh, and uh, once again, we can use the same example. It means we will use uh, education and income. If some procedure is for ordinal variables, we know from previous discussion, it can be also used without any problem for cardinal variables. So for these variables, we can also apply Spearman's or Kendall's. But opposite is not true. If your variables are ordinal, you cannot use Pearson coefficient which is only for cardinal. So let's uh, imagine some data. So uh, the first respondent, for example, eight years of education and income maybe 10. The next one will be, uh, for example, uh, 10 years and the income will be 12. The next one maybe it will be uh, 12 and uh, 13, uh, the next one may be 14 years and income will be also 14 and the last one may be 20 years and uh, <coughs> maybe uh, 16 average income. Doesn't matter on the measurement unit and uh, the logic of computation uh, of uh, Spearman's coefficient is following. You will replace these values by rankings so you will assign rankings to the first variable as well as to the second only you have to follow the rule that the same logic of uh, ranking it means ascending or descending must be applied to both columns uh, and the same logic so I will start from the lowest to the highest so uh, this is the first one value second one third fourth and fifth and the same can be here as I prepare this data in this style and then the logic is following you will take differences for this ranking, so these are usually called as i's uh, in uh, computation formulas. So i for education minus i for income. And here it will be very easy. 1 minus 1 is 0, uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, uh, 3 minus 3 is 0, 0, 0, so 5 zeros. And Formula, once again, not necessary to remember. For Spearman's correlation coefficient is following. We usually use symbol R with uh, index S, as it is Spearman's coefficient, and it is 1 minus 6 times uh, sum for these differences of uh, rankings. So I X minus I Y squared divided by n multiplied by n squared minus 1. And once again it can be proven that the range is from minus 1 till plus 1. And if you imagine in our case it's real and perfect positive relationship the higher the education the higher the income is so 0 0 0 0 and you will take uh, 0 squared, 0 squared, blah, 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 6 times sum up, so it's still 0, multiplied by 6 is still 0, divided by anything, it's still 0, and 1 minus 0 is 1. Perfect positive relationship, and it's present in our table. We can do reverse ordering and uh, uh, show that it will be minus 1, and every value will be inside this range. Okay, so that's uh, Spearman's and only very quick insight into the last one which is scandals. I will only describe it uh, by uh, some words 
So the logic uh, of candles is slightly, slightly different. You are not preparing rankings for the first and the second column, but you rank these pairs together. So according to the value in the first column, you will rank all these values. And then you only count cases in which the next values in the second column are higher or lower than the previous one. And according to these so-called concordances or discordances, you will compute this coefficient. If you like to know something more, let's try to find formula uh, at the internet, but it's not necessary. Once again, it will be in the range minus one till plus one. Okay, so that's short inside. And now I think we are ready to compute something at least and to interpret results. So, uh, if I would like to follow uh, the example uh, that colleague proposed, it means education and income. So, uh, first of all, we would need uh, to define missing values and then we can compute uh, correlation coefficient or pre-correlation coefficients for these three variables. So, I would propose, first of all, to go into data and let's go into variable view and uh, we have to uh, omit some values from the analysis. So once again, the fifth row, which is for income variable B41A, we have to exclude values which are zero, and six times eight, and six times nine. So that's it. Variable for income is prepared for us. And the second variable we would like uh, to use is uh, the third, uh, so the fourth, excuse me, uh, variable, which is length of education. And here code 88 is DKNA, so it should be also omitted. So for the fifth, uh, fourth variable, uh, B9, we should define discrete missing value 88. So. That's it. <coughs> and now let's compute correlation coefficient uh, for these two variables. So first of all, before the computation, once again, uh, the good practice for data analyst is to say, what is my expectation? What will be the result? So what we are really expecting? Minus one till plus one are possible ranges. So what will be expected value for correlation coefficient, for example, according to Pearson formula? Colleague, you seems optimistic. So what's your expectation? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Let's try. Uh, I guess the question. Uh, what is expected correlation between education and income? Uh, higher check data. Huh? Okay, so it will be positive, so that's your expectation, but let's try to be more precise. So still we are uh, in the range from zero till plus one. No. So okay, Dominic Pleasure says zero. Okay, that's the first guess. And other guesses? Point eight. Point eight? Okay, very optimistic. Okay, and other guesses? So have at least three competing hypotheses. Point four. Point four. Okay. Okay. That's nice. Excuse me. I'm uh, forcing you to some conclusions before the computation. But it's always very, very nice to have some idea what will be the result. At least you will avoid some uh, uh, silly results, uh, which are usually uh, caused by bad uh, uh, missing. <coughs> value definitions and, and other mistakes in data analysis. Okay, so if we are ready to compute, so let's go into analyze, correlate, and uh, the first option which is called bivariate. Bivariate means it computes correlation for only two variables. There is slightly more advanced uh, possibility how to compute correlation which is called partial for more than two variables but, excuse me, we'll not go into uh, this topic as we do not have enough time. But, of course, uh, you can read about it uh, in field textbook as well. 
Okay, so the dialog is quite simple. You take at least two variables for which you would like to compute correlation coefficient and move it to the right window. So in our case, it is years of education and income. You can add more than two variables and then all pair correlations will be computed for you. But we don't need it, uh, so that's it. So here you can see that by default, but you can change it and we will change it in a few minutes, you will compute Pearson's correlation coefficient. You can compute also Kendall's Tau or Spearman's. We will do it later. But uh, here I would like you would go into options. And you can see that by default, no checks here. But please ask for means and standard deviations. But we know something about these two variables. That's not necessary, maybe. And you can also ask for cross product deviations. That's what we describe at the chart. And covariances. So we can ask also for covariance. And by default, you can also see that significant correlations, it means correlations which are statistically significant from zero, we will discuss it later, will be flagged by stars. So we will see maybe some stars in the output, uh, the same style as we previously discussed in analysis of variance in post hoc comparisons. Okay, so we can ask for the computation and here it is. So first of all, there is some descriptive statistics, so we know something about our variables. And then quite long, long and boring table, including quite a lot of numbers. So the question is, which value should be compared to these guesses? And you have to take intersection of the row and column for our variables in which we are interested in. So it means years of education and income. And the first value, as it is described, is Pearson correlation. So, according to our computation, it is 0 0.32. So, I would congratulate to our colleague from the last row. You are the closest. And you were too pessimistic and you were too optimistic. But thanks for your guesses. Okay. And then you can see two stars or significance. And uh, there is some uh, node below the table that if there are two stars, correlation is significant at 0.01 level. So there is some statistical test behind. And what is this test about? I think it's easy to guess. So if you go back to previous discussion about contingency tables, so what were competing hypotheses uh, according to chi-square test last time? Null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So what was null hypothesis for the test of independence? Chi-square test of independence in contingency tables? Hmm? Zero hypothesis says that no relationship or independent. Yeah. Okay, and alternative, it's quite obvious to say, okay, they are related or dependent. Uh, in another way, statisticians would use only formulas, so they would say that correlation coefficient for the population, they usually use big R instead of small r for sample, is zero. An alternative hypothesis would be it's not real zero. So these are uh, these hypotheses. And if you can see that significance is quite low, at least below 0 0.0005, so we can conclude very easily we have proven there is some relationship between income and education. So if I would conclude so our result says, OK, there is some positive relationship. That's what we expected. Let's imagine it would be negative. We would go outside from this lecture immediately. It makes no sense to sit here if there is no surplus income. 
But of course, that may be our optimistic colleague would say, okay, I've expected more than this, I would also leave. It should be 0 0.8, sub 2, of course. And the question can be, okay, okay, this is figure which is present in our data, in my sample. And if I generalize to the whole population, is it possible there is no relationship at all or not? And according to our test, it's nearly impossible that the real uh, value for the population would be zero. But I would add the information that some statisticians uh, and uh, uh, also methodologists don't like this test and they call this hypothesis about no relationship or zero value for correlation coefficient as nil-null hypothesis. It means totally useless. And they say, okay, it would be ma maybe better to test it is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and or another value than to test just it is zero. And uh, I think uh, it is also uh, somewhere at my uh, web page, uh, but I will not find it, but you can find it at home uh, if you will go into the folder uh, statistics in SPSS. Uh, so there is a tool which is called confidence uh, interval for correlation and it can compute confidence interval for correlation coefficient. Uh, uh, if you like, uh, choose it. And there is another way how to compute confidence interval for correlation as it can be maybe more important uh, than to test the value. And I will show you how to not directly but slightly indirectly compute confidence interval for correlation as uh, it cannot be directly computed in SPSS unfortunately I don't know why. So if you will go once again to cro uh, correlation so analyze, correlate and bivariate and you will follow new dialogue which we haven't met previously which is the last one called boost trap I will not discuss you what is bootstrapping. If you like to know more, let's try to Google at the internet. So by bootstrapping, we can compute confidence interval nearly for every statistics you are interested in. For example, if we will go back, uh, we discussed about median, I think the first or the second lecture, but there is no magic formula for confidence interval for median. But by bootstrapping, you can compute it. So. We'll learn how to compute uh, confidence interval for correlation by bootstrapping. So if you click on continue and OK, there will be some cycles. SPSS compute 1,000 times our correlation coefficients and sum up results. And you can see there are some new rows in our table. And at the end of this table, you can see 95% confidence interval, which is starting at 0 0.248 and finishing at 0 0.404. So we can expect that the real value can be somewhere in this range for the Czech population. Okay, some more interpretation for these values. Doesn't function at all? Some problems. Okay. Some more interpretation to correlation coefficient. So we know it is not too big, not too small maybe, but there is very easy tool how to interpret correlation coefficient from substantive point of view. If you take the square for correlation coefficient, in our case it is 0 0.32 squared, so I guess it's approximately 0 0.1. And you will multiply it by 100 and you will interpret it in percentages. So interpretation would be flowing in our case. So if you take it in percentages, so in our case it's 10. So we can say, we can conclude that income is influenced by education from term percentages or one-tenth of income can be explained by education. This is quite a sad story as 90 
or nine tenths of income is influenced by another factors. But take it as it is. Okay, so that's Pearson's correlation, confidence interval, and the test for no relationship at all. And you can also recognize that the test can be described also by these stars. So if there are at least one star, we would reject null hypothesis. Okay, and now we will change it slightly and we will only learn how to compute it. Uh, the process is very similar. Uh, correlation coefficients according to Spearman's and Kendall's formula. So if you will go once again to correlate, be variate. So only first of all, please, as we wouldn't like to wait uh, quite a long time, go once again to bootstrap and we wouldn't use bootstrapping for this time. So please don't check perform bootstrapping. Okay, and now we will only ask for computation of Kendall's and Spearman and we will not use Pearson for the next step. So only Kendall's style and Spearman's coefficient will be checked for us. Okay, and oh, I haven't checked it. So once again, excuse me. So once again. So no bootstrapping, continue, candles, okay. So here it is. So here you can see two merge tables. First one for candles tau and the second one for Spearman's hall. The real practice in statistics would be to decide whether we would compute candles tau or Spearman's hall. Now we are only uh, demonstrating that we can compute advanced both these formulas but usually you will decide to use only one and uh, in general once again from minus one till plus one we can test whether there is no relationship or not so once again there is significance or there are stars and values from these two coefficients are by definition different as formulas behind are different and we can say in general that Spearman's Hall is higher or the same as Kendall's Tau in the same data. And of course it's not possible to compare Spearman's Hall and Kendall's Tau as these are different formulas. So for example if you would like to know something about relationship between education and income <coughs> and you would like to compare different countries you have to decide whether you will use Pearson's, Kendall's or Spearman's formula and you have to use the same formula for all data or your results will not be comparable and you will compare apples and pears as we call it in the Czech language I don't know what is uh, English version for this phrase Okay, so the scandal style and Spearman's Hall, but the story is once again the same. This is not fantastic relationship, but at least it is positive and it's not zero. It would be conclusion. Okay, that's it. And I know it's not too polite from me, but uh, I will ask you last time to prepare homework. So try to uh, analyze relationship between two ordinal cardinal variables by at least one of these correlation coefficients and interpret results. Uh, one more comment to homework. I have tried to update uh, the table with your homework, but of course it can happen that still some homework is not present in the table. So if there are some missing homework in the table, uh, which can be found in SIS, please let me know, send me all your homework which are not evaluated uh, and I will add it uh, to the final table. And once again, uh, I would like to say that uh, all dates for exam are in SIS uh, system already. It's not necessary to register, so it's uh, uh, necessary only to come. And if these dates do not fit to your schedule, let me know by email and we can manage another date for you. It's not a big problem. 
Okay, so uh, uh, my last comment would be that I would like to thank you uh, for all your attention, for your visit here. It was also a uh, new experience for me as we will be on YouTube, uh, at least with this lecture. So for future, you can also go back and to remind uh, and repeat all your knowledges. Uh, and uh, my uh, last comment would be, if you feel some uncertainty, uh, some necessity for help, let me know by email or uh, come personally. And it would be great for me to know about your problems and to help you in your data analysis. So uh, that's uh, my last command. I wish you, of course, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, many success for all your exams. So thanks for your attention. Bye.